Harry and Meghan. Let's talk about Harry and Meghan for a change. Uh, because he's won his phone hacking business. Um, and last week he lost one. So we're going to try and sort of work out you win some, you lose some with a man who really knows all about the royals as we go to talk to Talk TV's royal correspondent. Rupert Bell. Hello, Rupert. Good afternoon, Johnny. Cliff Morgan. Cliff Morgan. <laughs> Thanks for that. I knew you'd be there on hand. Yeah. And um, now, what's Harry going to spend £148,000 on today? And why did he win? And another thing, is this going to open up the floodgates for him to sue all the other papers as well? Well, he's been pretty litigious. He's got lots of court cases going on, so that £148,000, I think, is probably going to help cover some of his other legal fees. Remember, <laughs> right. he's, uh, So, remember, he had to pay out 48000 for a... a, 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 a a judgment earlier in this week for a court case that will come to trial next year mm. so there's going to be expensive legal fees for that this was obviously the case against the daily mirror and the sunday mirror and obviously he won some of it not all of what he was trying to get but partially won um for the phone hacking allegations which of course uh, various people have vehemently denied doing but the judge found in Harry's favour to the tune of £148,000. And so, uh, it, obviously, these events took place some time ago, um, but obviously Harry is trying to bring the British press into line. But the problem is for Harry, he needs the press uh, as much as uh, anybody out there to justify his existence and needs them on side. Well, if he keeps winning cases and losing and putting, bringing the British press to trial, the sympathetic view, quite naturally, is not going to be one that's uh, uh, naturally won because they will basically think, well, he just wants to have a pop at us all the time. Why should we help him rebuild his life now he's no longer part of the royal family? Which begs the question, who's advising him? Is he, uh, is he going beyond the kitchen with Meghan? Um, I think the thing is, this is his whole raison d'etre. Ever since, look, what he went through as a young lad with the loss of his mother barely just as 12 years of age and all that press treason, I'm sure it's weighed heavily on him and mm. that has left his mark and, and he's scarred because of it but actually the, the problem is is when he when does he stop he's been feeding the media over the last year with the Netflix documentary the, the spare book Endgame although he, they're not directly involved in it clearly there has been uh, you know although they say they weren't directly involved uh, there's been problems. The Oprah interview. The, all these things have been them using the press to attack the British, uh, well, the royal family and the British press. But you can understand where it came from. But there comes a time where perhaps he's got to say, right, I need to now just, in a sense, protect his family, rebuild and work his future. He can't constantly be looking back, however hard it was that he had what he had to go through. And it would have been unimaginable uh, what he had and the spotlight that he was put under sure. as a young man. But in that stage, a lot of that time, the British press were very much on his side and, and saw him as a, a very positive influence um, to the rest of the royal family. It's only since that he got with um, Meghan and when it all unraveled after the wedding, hasten to add, yeah. that it turned sour. He was really a, a much-loved spare, wasn't he? And even when he went to South Africa with Meghan, when they were working royals, to me, as a casual observer, it looked like it had been a major success. And then he sort of blew himself up. The Duke was seeking at least £440,000 worth of damages. The judge found that 15 of the 33 articles complained about by Harry were the result of unlawful information gathering, and so hence they've come to this calculation of £140,000. And now, as promised, here is the attempt to reconcile between uh, Meghan and uh, the King. She appears to be seeking a, quote, part-time reunion with the royal family, which King Charles may accept, but on one condition, according to sources, Rupert, reveal all. Uh, stop trashing them in the media. Right. Well, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> let's, let's be honest, that's the problem for them, because they want to rebuild, if they want to rebuild uh, the, the, the broken bridges that they have, they have got to basically build trust between each party. And at the moment, there doesn't seem, there's no trust, particularly between William and Harry. Now, 
the king is probably desperate to sort of bring his family back into the fold. He wants to see his grandchildren. He wants to try and have a normal life with other members of his family. But if at every time he comes over for whatever, and in a sort of two weeks' time, if they don't like something, you know, that they were suddenly weren't treated with quite the due deference that they expected, then you know, it suddenly appears in the press, then we're back to square one. So it's the element of trust between all parties is at the moment at zero level, um, particularly, and, and that's going to be the problem for Meghan and Harry. But they need, and you get the sense, that their brand has been tarnished by their whinging, that actually now it's time that they've got to start looking positive. Well, they need the brand that has helped them get to where they are back in the fold so that they can start cashing in on it again rather than being an outsider. The reality of the business celebrity world is not going so well for them, particularly over in the States. Indeed, because it says here that the couple's financial woes, uh, Meghan has been weighing up spending eight months of the year in California, IA, where the Sussex currently live in Montecito, and then the rest of the time renting an apartment in Kensington Palace. She's said to believe the arrangement could potentially aid in repairing the strains on her marriage with Prince Harry, while also helping to mend their relationship with King Charles, who's expressed a desire for the family to be reunited. And really, tragically, because there's no Diana, here is the man, the key, the only person in the world that can get his two boys together and say, stop fighting. Uh, yes, the king He's is. the only guy. He, wants, he, he is, but also, um, Harry and Meghan have got to say, to some extent, be big enough to say sorry. Now, there may be sorries from all sides, because, you know, there, there, there are... Is there, it, it, obviously, the way we see it is often quite one-sided because we never hear the royal family's version of events. We're hearing that they're always having a pop at the royal family, and clearly, less is more is the approach from the royal family, hoping every sort of issue blows over. But they, we've got to find a way of saying, right, it's water under the bridge now, right, we've done it, it, it I'm sorry, we're now going to move on and rebuild our lives for the sake of their children in a positive way, rather than all this negativity, which is clearly upsetting great swathes of the royal family. They've lost their very... They feel very isolated at the moment, the Sussexes, from their family. But let's be quite clear, they are the ones who have created this isolation by their decision to go to California and what they've been saying in the media. Can we just go back and ask in... Uh, how much do they regret their decision to walk out of the royal family? I mean... To most people in the country who are supporters of the monarchy, because without us, there wouldn't be a royal family. And we see that at every moment of great celebration or great, uh, you know, great mourning, just how much they are loved. And Harry and Meghan had a, a first-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bring the royal family into the 21st century. And it seemed to be they'd made a great start. Do you think they regret how it's all turned out and that actually they should have kept their gobs shut, moved to Montecito, but still been working royals, got on a plane and come home every so often? Well, the trouble is they've done these deals to do a documentary on their life and, you know, if it means us or how we, we left because everything was wonderful, well, that wasn't going to get anybody. Right. Watching. So they backed themselves into a, a corner because... Netflix, Spotify, all came came a running and offered them telephone numbers. Well, but you've actually got to go and give them something that actually is going to get people to read. So that was the problem for them. And they, I think now you're getting this sort of feeling that they are trying. We're hearing Harry's trying to, or little olive branches here. Megan now, you know, with these, uh, saying that sources, you know, that she wants to try and go to Kensington Palace. It, and the fact is their children, of course, are prince and, and princess. So they have basically still very much see themselves as members of the royal family. And, and they want their cake and eat it. Yes. Now, it's fine. If they don't want to do the, the nitty-gritty, the hard yards, well, that's fine. Go and live your life. L operate um, as any of the rest of us do, although obviously they've got quite a lot of money behind them. And enjoy your life. Work hard at whatever you want to do. But move on. And that's what I think people want. They're, and in America as well, they're fed up with uh, endlessly whinging about something. And, and I think that's, that's got, got to stop for them, ultimately, to repair 
uh, the, the, the cracks between the two, two families. And we do live in a hypermedia age. And let's face it, William wears the crown, literally. Catherine, who has been welcomed into the family as a non-royal, now, of course, very much a royal, and she's behaved impeccably, she's doing great things, I think they're much loved and popular, and William knows that, actually, a bit of Harry there is a slight threat to his story, isn't he, as he makes his way to being king one day. They are, they're doing well, aren't they, William and Catherine? And they don't really need Harry and Meghan and that noise, do they? Am I correct in reading that? Well, they don't need the noise, but I bet you bottom dollar they wouldn't mind them around doing some of the, the heavy lifting. For really? The do you think family. so? No, I think because we saw that they could and mm, were mm. very good at it. Mm. And that's the frustration, I think, for lots of people. Harry, when he goes out and about, does create a touch of stardust. He's got that cheapy, chappy persona. He certainly did. It seems to have been lost now. Um, and he always looks a little earnest, as if he's frightened <laughs> to let his hair down. But he did always have a, a way of engaging with people. And I think the royal family do miss that. There's no two ways about it. He's a, he's a, he was very good at bringing something and being good in a room. And I, the royal family wouldn't be mind that. And Meghan certainly has got a bit of star quality about it. You can't deny it. No. And that's why I think and the royal family are dependent now, the king and queen. And they remember, they're in their mid-70s. You've got William and Kate obviously got a young family, so that puts a little bit of pressure on their time, but you can't expect them to do it all the time. Princess Royal is terrific on the road and is much loved, but, you know, she's again in her 70s. The Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh go and do their thing and are very popular, make no mistake, in their way, but they're not stardust like William and Kate will get eyeballs on them. And you know, if they were in the royal family, Meghan and Harry would get so. But unfortunately, they, Meghan has to get used to the fact that you are never going to get the top job. You are always going to be a supporting actress, in her case, to the main <laughs> pair. You know, the Hollywood billing is William and Kate, and then underneath, and Meghan will never be the one that is top billing. She cannot be because the protocol won't allow it. No, that's... that's uh, I mean, you know, if she'd been born here, she'd have known that. It's funny how she didn't, Rupert. Uh, I, I, I'm... Uh, yeah, she's a bright lady, so <laughs> let's be honest. She knew, OK? Yes. You do know that you are never going to get the top job, right? And you're going to marry into this gilded family. And it's not easy. You know, you are born into it and you're basically expected. You know, William can't suddenly decide, I want to go and do something else. You know, he wants to become president of our beloved Aston Villa, right? He can't... Wow. Suffer. No, because he that's, be to... no, because that's <laughs> William's job, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, but he, that William's job, you know, he can't... Well, it will be William's job in due course. But but I hope I mean? so. Well, I... Um, but what I'm saying... Fix it, Rupert. He, uh, well, I'll try. But anyway, well, I, I knew we'd get Aston Villa into this conversation. Inevitable, mate, inevitable. inevitable. But the point is, he can't suddenly decide to go and have a normal job. He was basically... His birthright said... You have a life of service in front of you, and there's no ifs or buts or maybes. That's it. You can't decide to go and do anything else. And, it's, and that's not easy, although, of course, you live this pampered lifestyle. You have to get up every morning, and when you walk out that door, you've got to put on the happy face. Um, if we get up and we don't feel particularly well, we can, we can harumph our way around the world, not if we're in a, out on the street, not for William, and he's had to, and Harry, are still in the same situation, they have to put on a happy face. Uh.